what good is it going to do you to play the woe is me? You know, you might have a moment of this sucks because it does, right? Um, Just like when you bust your leg or rip your Achilles or have cancer, you know, but the research has shown for so many years that a more positive, optimistic mentality is longevity, healthier relationships, more mentally and physically um, capable, and on and on and on. So this- Mary Beth, thanks for joining me today. Hey, Robert. Thanks for having me. So we're talking about mental health, and I, I just kind of want to jump right into this. As it relates to security professionals, what is the one thing that you think everyone needs to start doing in our industry? Yeah, I think one thing that everybody would benefit from, regardless of what industry you're in, to be honest, would be uh, building and maintaining resilience. And and if you don't mind, just because sometimes we assume people know what we're talking about, resilience is essentially, um, you know, having that ability to adapt, you know, healthily, not just adapt, but adapt healthily when you're hit with stress, adversity, trauma, you know, just like life throws curveballs. And so it's that ability to bounce back, move forward, regardless of what might be happening on the sidelines. Gotcha. I love the way how you frame that in, in this talk that you're giving coming up, um, resilience, because sometimes with, with mental health, I think there's sometimes a bit of a connotation with it. But when you when you frame it with mm-hmm. resilience, especially for our profession, the kind of the benefit of it is almost embedded in that that keyword that you're using. Yeah. And really not just me saying this and seeing it in my own practice, but also the research shows that it benefits both mental and physical health. And I think, you know, that's just people are coming to understand more and more how those two are so intertwined, the mental physical health facet. So um, we will, I'm sure we'll talk more about that over the next 20 to 30 minutes. Exactly. Exactly. Um, w- w- when you bring up the, these topics of, uh, of, you know, talking about building resilience or, or mental health, what tend to be the common objections or reactions that, that you tend to, to get or, or any of the sort of pushback that you might yeah, get? Because I know that's pretty uh, common think, in, in this industry. I think that the, the natural pushback is um, depending on who you are, right? There are some people that still place a pretty huge stigma on the term mental health or therapist. I was just having a therapy session yesterday with a client and he said when he told, no, he's, he's in his maybe 40. Okay. And he told his father that he was going to start talking to me. And the guy's like, Ooh, the father was like, Oh, you know, that's not good. They're going to mess with your head. And I was like, what? Right. So I think just that the idea of mental health um, or therapy can still have a stigma less so now than say 10 years ago, but we still have a lot of work to do to kind of um, quash stigma. And the other thing is um, part of, you know, what you and I will talk about is when I talk about building and maintaining resilience, it has a lot to do with my absolute favorite theory in psychology called cognitive behavioral theory. And one of the reasons why I love it so much is because it it works on the mindset, cognitive behavioral, meaning what we think sparks emotions, affects how we behave and thus how we live our life. And the, the reason why I love it so much is because we as humans have the ability to control our mindset. So that means that it's not going to be Mary Beth's magic wand that makes you better. You're going to have to do the work. And you realize some people are like, oh my God, I didn't realize that just shifting my mindset can do X, Y, and Z and A, B, and C. And other people are like, shit, you mean I got to do work? You know? So it just, those are some of the, the, you know, you have different people and some people are totally willing to do the work and some people just want me to do the work. So that's, you know, other than that, I don't see a lot of objections to people once they really understand all the benefits of resilience, it's hard to not want to work on it. Right. I, I mean, I was going through, I just, I just turn my own story and see how you react to this, uh, going through a couple of injuries a while back. And I kind of noticed I was just kind of stuck in this pattern of negative thoughts. And one, one of the techniques I did, and, and we can talk about this later is just meditation. And, and they, they talked about a lot awesome. in this app was breaking up a lot of these negative thought patterns. And I was shocked at how much, you know, it, it wasn't like necessarily an affirmation or anything like that, or something kind of spiritual. It was just having a technique to break up these negative thoughts 
helped me a lot, helped my attitude and made going through some of these injuries a lot easier and going through that process. And Perfect. Um, I mean, those are two, two yeah. facets I talk about all the time, how to stop the spiral of negativity because negative thoughts come naturally. And for some people, Robert, they come pretty often. And meditation is kind of one of what I call like the hacks, like the easy fixes to shifting our mindset to a more positive because we all fit on the spectrum somewhere between negative and positive, right? Um, pessimism, optimism, and shifting our mindset, whether that be in like little chunks or like huge leaps will get us more positive, which will make us, which will build our resilience and make us more mentally and physically healthy. What are some of the positive results that you've seen in, in your clients or, or maybe yourself in your own work um, that, that people have seen through kind of embracing uh, CBT? Yeah, on the extreme end, um, way, way, way less suicide thoughts, suicidal thoughts. Um, because what this person was doing is kind of um, what you were saying is not just the spiral of negativity, but that spiral of negativity that, you know, is catastrophizing. Oh, my God, you know, I, I screwed up at work. I dropped the ball. I'm procrastinating. I suck. I'm going to lose my job. I'm the provider. That is my job. M my family's going to leave me. Um, so why should I even be here on this earth? I mean, literally wow, telling me, you know. Um, not having a plan per se, having the thoughts about it, kind of knowing what he would do, but you know, so that's, you walk through that. So that's on the extreme end, you know, on the less extreme end, I'll talk even about my own little venture this year. So I am not somebody that believes in New Year's resolutions because I think that it, they set you up for failure. So I make goals, right? And they usually fit in three categories, mind, body, soul, or, you know, ex, you know however you want to do it, personal, professional community. And this year I made the commitment to work on my own resilience and how I'm doing that. And I put this in this talk that you made mention is this challenge at the end, because you can't just learn a theory and then not put it, put it into practice if you really want to work on this, right? So I give them this, it's like telling someone to go on a diet, but without getting them, giving them any guidelines as to what that might look like. So I made a list of things, you know, some that I really don't want to do, but I know I've said I'm going to do, you know, and I'll tell you about what I did last month. Um, and I, each month I've done at least one new activity. So whether it's been a mindfulness meditation class a few times, um, different types of yoga that I was kind of like, oh, God, I don't really want to do that because it's not my style. Well, I, just see if it's your style, do it. And so last month, the thing I was least looking forward to on my list is um, a cold plunge. And I did it. And I got to tell you, so I, I did a... Um, a social media reel on it, but I was like this, it sucked as bad as I thought it was going to suck, but it is the thing that I'm most proud of on my list so far, because it, you know, I like, I just hate anything cold, but anyway, so now this month is doing more box jumps, which I hate again, they aren't always fun, but like other stuff is more fun. Like I did an audio book and I'm going to do a master class. So I'm making this list of things that either I've said I'm going to do and haven't done things that I don't want to do, but I know are good for me, you know? So why? Because when you do the hard things, you know, you shift what you're telling yourself, which changes your emotions, which changes how I behave, which shifts how I live my life, which is, in fact, creating this mindset that's building my resilience and making me a healthier person. So I'm loving it. It's really kind of a fun experiment. And I can say to my clients, I'm doing it myself. I'm not just telling you to do it or suggesting you do it, it really works. It's not just not just theoretical. No. No. Uh, you, you've seen you've seen the benefits yourself. Hmm. I I always knew that I was a pretty resilient person, but it's not something you take for granted. It's something you have to work on. It's a lifestyle. You know, I kind of joke, but not joke. I say this isn't something that you go, oh, break in time of crisis. You know, that glass. You got to break it in time of crisis. This is something you got to work on all the time. Right. I think too with mental health in this profession, and and correct me if I'm wrong. The experiences that you've had talking to other you know, protectors or, or people in corporate security, it's sometimes maybe it's seen as kind of like wishy-washy. It's something that, you know, maybe is a sign of, of weakness that you have to work on it. But mm. you know, the, the way that I kind of uh, think about it is you've got a very stressful job. If, if you're maybe you're seeing dangerous materials online or you're seeing it in real life or, or um, dealing with difficult situations. And if you're not constantly investing in taking the time to to keep yourself sharp, and have mm -hmm. your own mindset ready, 
you're not going to be able to perform at your best Absolutely. down the road. And yeah. I, I, I'm just, I'm just saying that I, I, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's hundred percent true. I, I feel, and, and this is why I, this was my commitment this year is, you know, I take care of people emotionally, right. Mental health. And so I feel that if I'm not strong, both mentally and physically, how am I going to be able to help others? And I feel that's true in every field, whether you're a protector, um, whether you're, you know, in, in your field, whether you're in nursing, whether you're an accountant, whatever it is, you know, and I talk about not just professionally as a person, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, the whole thing about, you know, oh, uh, mental health or, oh, I, you, you know, like taboo, but I feel that you said a second ago, um, for some people, they say sign of weakness, right? Well, I believe, and I think this can shift stigma for some people, is that people that seek mental health treatment in any way, shape, or form, um, it's a sign of strength. And when I say any way, shape, or form, thank God and hallelujah, you know, my profession isn't just talk therapy anymore, because that doesn't work for everybody. And there are so many different treatment styles now. Like, listen, there's, there's animal therapy right? Animals can be so curative. And I think that, you know, kind of removing the whole stigma of, oh, I don't want to sit on somebody's couch and, you know, talk about my mother. That's kind of like, you know, 1970s, right? And we've come a really long way. And if you put, you know, a little bit of time into a Google search, you'll see how many different types of treatment there are now that have just totally changed, especially like there's trauma focused style therapies, which I think is super important. Right. So it's not like, oh, just tell me about your trauma and you have to relive it. That sucks. Um, and I, I believe that, you know, it, you know, just again, just to repeat that seeking mental health, you know, and, and it is a sign of strength. But what I talk when I used to teach, you know, this, I used to teach at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. I would talk to my students about this umbrella of health and you have mental health and you have physical health let's consider them equally as important. You know, just like if you had, you know, you, you know, you screwed up your Achilles and you'd go to physical therapy, you know, you're feeling down, you're feeling anxious. You'd feel like you're just off. You know, there's just nobody that wouldn't benefit to talking to somebody, you know, one hour a week, that's neutral, that isn't your friend, that isn't just going to tell you what you want to hear. Um, and just sort of balancing and processing crap that's going on in your life. So whether that's talk therapy, whether that's, you know, your own style of uh, animal therapy, exercise, meditation, yoga, whatever that is, there's all styles for everybody. You have to find what works for you. I love that analogy that you gave with the, uh, you know, breaking your ankle or, or whatever, because, you know, I, I just think of the same way. If, you know, you don't take the time to recharge your body and, and you know, let, let your body heal, it's going to fail on you when you're in the field. And exactly. so, you know, you can't, or if you're trying to be a bodybuilder or something and you're just going in and pushing the big weights every day, you know, eventually something's going to break. And it's the same thing with your mind. Doesn't, you know, if, if you're not investing that time into, you know, building that, that mental resilience, if you've got a stressful job with mo which most people in this profession, it's very sure. stressful. Sure. It's, it's going to, you know, it's not going to allow you to either perform at your best or stay in this business as long as, as maybe you possibly can and, and prevent burnout and things like that. Absolutely. So yeah. then why don't we dive into some of the, the techniques that we were talking about in our, in our call last week um, for someone that wants to do what you're suggesting about building resilience, what are the kind of steps that, that or techniques that, that you tend to recommend to them? Yeah, I think the very first one, um, again, sort of pivots off something you said earlier. And that would be, how do I, like you used meditation to help like sort of quash your negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. Another technique would be what I call choosing the lens through which you look. In other words, like you said, I can like wow, wow my way through a physical injury and then say, woe is me, but that's not going to get you anywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you choose a different lens, in other words, okay. So this is not the most ideal situation, but um, I can either go, oh, blah, blah, woe is me, or I can say, okay, this sucks, but I'm going to do my darndest to do what the doctor says, and then I'm going to go through physical therapy, and I'm going to be stronger when I come out. I promise you, 
that your mindset will shift and you will become more resilient, right? So you're, again, that that plowing forward, regardless of what's happening on the sidelines due to whatever that stress, trauma, adversity. And so that's that's a huge one is choosing a different lens. You can choose a lens that makes you feel like crap, that could ruin your day, your week, your month, um, and affect you know your work life, your personal life, et cetera. Or you can choose a more positive lens that's more supportive, um, that's actually going to contribute to your life, uh, shift your mindset, make you more resilient. So there's one. Um, another quick, sorry, sorry to interrupt Mary, Beth, but can you, can you just give an example of what that might look like in, in a sure. real world case? Yeah. Um, so like I say, for example, let's say you're sitting in the doctor's office and he says, you know what, uh, we've done the testing and like, we thought you, you have diabetes and you can go, are you effing kidding me? I have diabetes. Are, am I going to be on insulin? Like you can kind of freak out and you can, you know, be angry and feel sorry for yourself and blah, blah, blah. But you can, or you can just choose a different lens. You can go, oh, well, that kind of sucks. Um, but, you know, everybody's got something and my something happens to be diabetes and I'm going to do my best to manage it. And um, I mean, what good, what good is it going to do you to play the woe is me? You know, you might have a moment of this sucks because it does, right? Um, just like when you bust your leg or rip your Achilles or have cancer, you know, but the research has shown for so many years that a more positive, optimistic mentality is longevity, healthier relationships, more mentally and physically um, capable and on and on and on. So this I'm just telling you, it's just amazing to me you know, again, working on my own resilience. And this is just, I'm just entering into month six of my, you know, little adventure, um, how much of a shift I've seen in myself. Gotcha. How about um, what, what were you going on with our number two? Yeah, about another hack. Yeah. Um, I am a longtime proponent and sometimes have been told annoying proponent of positive speech. And what I mean by that is taking out icky terms that I don't like, and I will explain what they are and why they're icky. Um, one of them, the first one is the word can't, um, it's totally disempowering. Um, it's not helpful. So when you say I can't, I can't, I can't, it's just like, how, what are you saying about yourself? And I'm saying even little stuff, like when someone says to you, hey, Robert, it's Friday. Let's like, you want to hang out tonight. You're like, oh, I can't, blah, blah, blah. It's not that you can't, just that maybe you have other plans or you don't want to be with that person or whatever. So you you word it in such a way that you say, oh, you know, I just feel like chilling tonight. You know, uh, no offense, maybe another time. Or, you know, I'm going out with somebody else. And you might think, oh, it might offend that person. But you're being honest about what's really going on. Saying I can't, I just even saying that kind of like, makes me go cringe, you know? Mm. So that's the first one. The second one is have to. Um, and I say this, uh, and people usually jump down my throat, but I'll say the only, the only thing you have to do in life is die. And people are like, you have to pay taxes. I go, oh, wait, wait, I'm not done. There are caveats, meaning there might be consequences, but the only thing in life you really have to do is die. So what do I mean by this one is, um, and I know you're going to, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, Mary Beth, what are you doing this weekend? Well, I have to go to the dry cleaner. I have to go to the grocery store and pick up groceries. And I have to go to my stepdaughter's volleyball game. I don't have to do any of those things. I get to, I think, you know, it's like a privilege, you know, it's like shifting that lens again. So what I would say is, Hey, Mary Beth, what are you doing this weekend? Yeah, I'm going to swing by the dry cleaners and pick up my stuff. I got to stock up. At the, I'm going to stock up at the grocery store and I'm going to swing by my stepdaughter's volleyball game. Like, I don't know if you feel it or you hear it in just the wording that have to is just, it makes you a little bit of a prisoner of your own life that mm. have to. Um, and then the third one, I really encourage people to yank from their vocabulary is the word try. Um, so did you, are you a Star, a Star Wars fan? I'm I'm a bit of a Star Wars fan, yeah. the original trilogy. Yeah, I think we talked about that. And and I say to my audience, you know, what was what is it that Yoda said to Luke Skywalker in The Empire Strikes Back when he was teaching him the ways of the Jedi and he was like Luke was kind of half assing, right? And so he says to him, Do you know do you remember? Uh do or do not. There is no try. <laughs> exactly. So it's it's sort of cop out. Like I'll give another example. Um, 
hey, Mary Beth, what are you doing for the, you know, what do you, what kind of goals are you making for the new year? And, and someone says, oh yeah, I'm going to try to go to the gym more. I'm going to try to drink more water. I'm going to try to eat, you know, better. It's such a cop out to me. It's like, no, I'm going to make, you can say I'm making an effort to, or I am. If you just keep telling yourself that is what you're doing, like doesn't mean you have to be perfect. Yeah. I'm going to be going to the gym more often. I'm going to drink more water and I'm going to eat better. Okay, it doesn't mean that it has to be 24 seven, but saying try, you know, I'm going to try. I, I don't know. It just, it, what does this, that mean? These things at this point gives me cringe. Mm. Well, so what I like about the mentality that you're talking about, it's not so much this, at least from, from what I'm understanding here, it's not trying to be these positive affirmations that you might not necessarily believe. It's about taking a proactive stance in your life rather than just kind of being the victim of circumstances. Totally. I mean, and that, that right there, when you said proactive, that's more positive than that sort of def those defeating phrases or words. So that's another hack. What, what are some common ways that you see with cognitive behavioral therapy? I mean, you've mentioned already previously kind of like negative self talk kind of the inverse of a lot of these hacks, but what are kind of the common things that maybe people are doing wrong that causes them to be less resilient? Yeah. So there are something called ANTS, A-N-T, and it's automatic negative thoughts. So it really comes down again to that negativity. Um, because when we talk cognitive behavioral, it's simply that our thoughts, cognitions is just a fancy word for thoughts. So cognitive cognitions, our thoughts create our self-talk, right? In other words, I didn't go to the gym. I'm looking chubby. I need to, you know, get, get slimmer. So what am I saying to myself? Like, how is that going to be helpful? It's naturally going to generate crappy feelings, like of low self-worth of not looking good. So what's, what's going to happen? It's going to dictate my behavior on how I live my life, which is absolutely going to affect my mindset and my resilience. So we have, there's a list of automatic negative thoughts. It's like catastrophizing, you know, black and white thinking, all or nothing thinking. And so when I work with clients with this, this is kind of sometimes how we start depending on where they're coming in. And we'll go through this whole list. It's like, not do you do it? Have you done it? It's like, is this a consistent thinking pattern? Mm -hmm. And so we're, what the ultimate goal is to shift the thinking patterns, right? So stopping the negative thoughts. Yes. Again, as I said to you earlier, negative thoughts come naturally for you, for me, even like I, I say, even the Dalai Lama has negative thoughts, right? And, but but how we manage them determines the outcome of our own lives. And that's where I say to people, that's why it's so worth it that it's in your control to shift your own mindset. You just got to do the work and the work is not that hard. So, you know, it's, it, that's the whole thing of those, that automatic negative thoughts and sort of just re recognizing your own thought patterns. And sometimes we spend some time talking about where those thought patterns come from. And more often than not, it's from childhood experiences and mm. like what we, what we thought our parents might've been saying to us or what we thought of ourselves, you know, maybe comparing ourselves to siblings or friends or whatever, but they're these, you know, sort of set in thought patterns that need to shift because they're dictating how we respond to these different things that happen in life. So then I guess that would be the, the, the exercises, it sounds like to me, might be very common to all the different clients to just kind of thinking what works, what doesn't, but kind of that's where that experience with, with the therapist can help is like, what are those embed thoughts so that you can recognize them before they start popping up and on replay over and over and over again? And what can you do about them? Like there's something called a thought record and it has seven columns. So again, you know, you start going down, say like you're catastrophizing and, um, you stop it, but then you realize, okay, I, I need to do this thought record. So it's like these seven columns, at least that's the one I use. And it first one says like, you know, tell me what the thought was. Oh yeah, I'm a failure. I suck as a provider. You know, you go on and on about kind of where that led you, but you, sh you share a little bit more in that column about like, where were you, what was going on? Cause some of those things could be indicators as to why you go down that, that road. And then it's like, you know, how do I feel? And so you say on a scale of zero to hundred percent, like, where are you in your mood, whatever. And you can write some notes in there too. And then you, you give evidence for those thoughts, evidence against those thoughts. Right. And what's another way that you can articulate that same thing, but a little bit more uh, positive, a little bit less self-critical. Right. And I tell people, don't say what you think I want to hear, say what you think you could say and believe it. 
because that's what you want to do, right? If you're going to shift your mindset, you need to have different language, right? You're choosing a different lens through which you're viewing things, but it has to be in a way that is, is palatable to you and that you're going to believe. And then at the very end, the seventh column asks, so how do you feel now? And I say to my clients, again, some people feel worse. So just be honest about how this whole processing of your thought pattern made you feel, right? So it's this recognition that I have this thought pattern. Where's it coming from? Why am I doing it? Where's the evidence? And then sometimes they go, well, there's no real evidence for it. So I get what you're saying, but you know, so it's kind of fun to go through it and them to realize how they're perpetuating their own thought patterns. Right. And, and I just think in a, with this exercise and in my personal interpretation of it is, you know, once you just put something in there to interrupt that loop at some point, whereas when you're just stuck on that loop over and over and over again, you, and you go down that spiral, whereas like going through that exercise, it kind of stops it in its tracks. And then, yeah. you, know, event, you know, 90, at least in my experience, 90% of the time, once you, once you've interrupted that thought, it just kind of disappears after a while. Yes. Yeah. And like, again, having that in your own control is pretty empowering. Mm. All right, Mary Beth, we're coming up on all the time that I promised to steal from you today. Cool. What's the main takeaway that you want listeners to remember from this episode? Yeah, your mental and physical health matter. So, you know, I think an easy mental health hack is working on your resilience because the benefits are phenomenal and you can work. It's not just something you're born with. It's something that you can work on and improve at any age. So that's also encouraging. And the, the benefits are all positive. There's nothing negative to working on your resilience. All right. And how can listeners get in touch if they want to learn more about your work? Oh yeah. Okay. So I have a website. So it's drmarybeth.com. So it's D-R Mary Beth, M-A-R-Y-B-E-T-H.com. Mary Beth, thanks again for coming on the show. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Rob. Have a fun weekend.